Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Apogee Online Meetup, Holiday Edition. My name's Kayla, and I'm going to be your host today. We're broadcasting live from Google London headquarters, and we're all very excited that you were able to join us today. Back by popular demand, today's event marks our fourth Apogee Online Meetup. For those of you who haven't had a chance to join us before, these events are designed exclusively for you, our EMEA audience. And our goal is for them to be interactive and educational. We're very excited for the agenda we have prepared for you today. Our topic is going to be around integrating applications, data, and processes with APIs, and how this can help you accelerate your digital transformation. We'll kick off with a short introduction to IPaaS and API lifecycle management. Next, we'll get to learn a little bit more about delivering connected and seamless experiences for customers, partners, and employees, and how these experiences are dependent upon the availability and the quality of data. As always, we'll provide you plenty of opportunities throughout the presentation to ask questions and participate. Before we start, a couple quick reminders. First, as I mentioned, we encourage you to ask questions throughout the duration of the program. In order to ask questions, go ahead and click the link that will be shown in the next slide, or you can use the Ask a Question button that will be shown on your view screen. Additionally, we'd love for you to share your takeaways and thoughts on social media using the hashtag Apogee Online Meetup. As I mentioned, in order to ask your questions, go ahead and use the link that is provided on this slide or use that Ask Question button that's available on your view pane. Now, without further ado, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable, and let's get started. I'm pleased to be joined on stage today by Greg and Ollie. Greg is the CTO for EMEA in Latin America for Informatica, and Ollie heads up digital transformation for Apogee. You guys have the floor. Thanks very much, Kayla. Thank you. Uh, and welcome, and it's really great to be back. Um, and we both really look forward to your questions shortly. When Greg and I first met to discuss the, the, the content for this uh, meetup, we were really keen to really start off with giving you a sense of like the common challenges that uh, our, our combined customers uh, see and, how, um, and what uh, are they doing to alleviate some of those challenges to really give you a sense of this co kind of complex landscape of the modern enterprise. So how does IPaaS and API lifecycle management help your business? How can you unleash that transformative power? So let's talk about some of these challenges first of all. What are the digital transformation challenges? I think it's totally right to start with customer. Many organizations today are talking about being customer centric, but I think many are still really struggling. That means producing delightful experiences for your user. It's about meeting customers where they are. And it's important to emphasize that that isn't just new channels of engagement directly with a brand. It is also about meeting customers uh, who you don't necessarily inter interact with directly. So for example, via uh, an ecosystem of partners. These customers today are hyper-informed. Uh, and impatient, so that the user experiences need to cater for that. Yeah, and we see exactly the same thing with our customer base uh, here at Informatica. So organizations want to provide high quality, seamless, multi-channel experiences through digital platforms. And one of the key things that drives that end user experience, a high quality experience, is the quality of the data. So we see a lot of initiatives supporting digital transformation, such as mastering of data, getting a single view of a customer to really help drive that high quality end user experience. And then secondly, ecosystems. For many CEOs and CIOs today, this is very much on the agenda. How can I, as an organization, participate externally beyond my trust boundary? Um, now, we dro drove into this in much more detail in a previous webinar. So if you're new, I do recommend to uh, look at our previous webinars uh, on this topic. But the critical thing here is being able to participate externally efficiently. So it's about rapid partner onboarding, rapid external developer onboarding, uh, so that you have a seamless experience of in, uh, signing up and interacting with your organization. Often, by the way, with ecosystems, it's about exploring new business models. So entire business units exploring new business models and driving innovation. And then thirdly, technology. Uh, for many organizations today, there is a complex landscape of previous existing investments uh, and legacy. And it's 
you have to leverage that. But you have to leverage that in a way that satisfies the impatient demands of your business and your users and your partners. So the key thing there is uh, abstracting that legacy and surfacing up simple APIs that remove those silos so that the consumers of those APIs can focus on delivering value. Yeah, and I think from our side, we certainly see that it's not just about the software or the infrastructure, but it's about the amount of skill sets many organizations now need to manage, recruit, and develop in order to deliver these types of services. And that's a real key challenge for many of the large organizations we work with. Fourthly, data. So for many organizations, uh, data is more of a liability than a valuable asset, but of course, data is or should be incredibly valuable. And it's important that you can master and leverage that data for your internal users and your external users. Yeah, and in a similar vein, we've all heard words like data is a new oil or data is the most valuable asset an organization has. But many organizations aren't really uh, making the best value of the data that they own. So let's try and simplify things and really help us to exploit the value of the data that we own. And lastly, agility. Uh, so let's split this into two, organizational agility and team agility. Uh, there's often a focus uh, with digital uh, on the latter. Uh, with team agility, we're typically talking about autonomous, empowered uh, teams focusing on a particular business challenge. And these teams now need to be uh, fleet of foot and don't need the tax of complexity of a traditional IT landscape. So these are the teams that typically use and consume simple APIs so that they can focus on value. And then with organizational agility, this ties back into ecosystems as well. It's about being able to onboard partners rapidly, being able to test those partnerships quickly and cheaply and explore new business models, new go-to-market propositions and driving new innovation. Yeah, and certainly organizational agility is something which uh, organizations need to really uh, consider in their adoption of, uh, of, of technology and platforms. If you look ironically from left to right, one of the key reasons now why organizations begin to adopt cloud services is agility. But whilst we do that, it's often in an ungoverned, um, ungoverned and unstandards way, which means that actually we inhibit the agility that we actually want to strive to achieve by moving to cloud. So we need to think about how we can simplify moving forward to retain that agility as we go into this digital multi-cloud world. Yeah, and here you can see just a visualization of how the landscape in terms of just purely the skill sets required to kind of drive that digital transformation agenda. You know, and this is a five year view, uh, as you can see, even if you look at the compute layer there, five years ago, we were talking about things like Pig and Hive, and now it's Kafka Streams and so on. The landscape is changing rapidly. And unless we, unless we govern uh, and adopt standards and simplify, we'll simply not be able to keep pace uh, with the rapid pace of change into the future to support that digital initiatives. So we really need to simplify and standardize where possible. And to that point, I think rather than fighting this landscape, it's about how do you leverage and become masters of this landscape? So how can you quickly, safely, and securely uh, connect and adapt and uh, respond uh, and leverage these new technologies. Yeah, and for me, as the world changes rapidly, we move into this multi-cloud hybrid world. Um, what we're seeing is now mass fragmentation of data on a scale that we've never seen before. Informatica was originally invented to solve the problem of data fragmentation on the on-premise world, but now we're seeing wholesale adoption of multiple clouds multiple uh, platform and software as a service initiatives. So really we have a much more complex data landscape than we've ever had before. And of course it's super critical that in this com complex landscape, your API consumers, whether they're internal or external, don't get infected with that complexity. They have simple APIs across the breadth of your organization. Yeah, so here you can see some statistics. It's a right scale state of the cloud survey that was released this year. And what it visualizes is it shows that by 2025, 85% of organizations will have adopted flat, uh, cloud. I think the pace of cloud adoption is not going to slow. Um, but interestingly enough, 81% of those organizations surveyed also said they were implementing a multi-cloud strategy, which really means that we're going to have that type of fragmentation we've previously discussed. And in the meantime, 
58% of organizations over that five year period, they won't move solely to cloud. They will still be on-premise applications that will need to support. So there's a real danger that we could create silos and disconnected data on-prem uh, as well as in the cloud through that complex hybrid world that we've discussed. And this is very much familiar territory for Apogee customers. Uh, everybody's on this journey and we certainly recognize uh, these statistics. And in fact, it's important to also emphasize this is very much Google Cloud strategy through the acquisition, for example, of Apogee in November 2016 to the open sourcing of Kubernetes, being able to meet you where you are today and help you adapt and evolve over time with confidence. Yeah, so if you put all those facets together, mass fragmentation, lots of different skill sets, lots of different technologies and a multi-cloud strategy, put that in the context of digital transformation where we want to be innovative, we want to be agile, we want to release new services that are very timely, and it's very difficult to do with all that burden and that legacy upon our shoulders. So again, it's all about, all about how we plan for the future to make sure we can be agile enough to take advantage of um, a timely opportunity before our competitors do, so we can maintain differentiation. So of course, digital transformation drives substantial API growth. So you'll see uh, exponential growth in API traffic uh, and a proliferation of new channels, new devices, new connected experiences. And of course, you need to be able to satisfy that without in any way impacting uh, your traditional landscape, the systems of record that, you, that your business depend on. Apogee typically uh, have seen around two and a half times growth in, in API uh, traffic uh, year on year, and we typically see around 75% growth in the number of APIs year on year. And then of course there are substantial events like the, the Black Friday to Cyber Monday window where we see that growth go through the roof. Yeah, and similarly in Informatica, through our iPass platform, we've seen a 300% increase in API usage year on year, which is pretty significant. In addition to that, we're seeing new sources of data uh, that organizations want to process through our cloud infrastructure. So we, we now have technologies such as mass ingestion to deal with machine and device generated data as well. So the types of data that organizations want to leverage is changing as well. So I am very much aware that in the audience today, we have those that are familiar with Informatica, but not Apogee, uh, those that are familiar with Apogee, but not Informatica, and perhaps those that are not familiar with either. So I just wanted to really demonstrate here on a, one image how this all kind of connects. So let's start outside in. Uh, let's start with the customer and start from the top. So we have a number of many connected experiences, whether that's uh, internal websites, uh, staff enablement, uh, staff devices, whether that's uh, your public website or your mobile app, or indeed a rich ecosystem of partners. Many channels of, of, of potential engagement. And this is supported by Apogee and API lifecycle management, where from conception to early delivery to kind of that DevOps culture, producing something into production, you have uh, a, a great modern way of developing APIs safely and securely for your organization. Yeah, and Informatica, just to introduce the, the term IPaaS. IPaaS is Integration Platform as a Service. Uh, in a section later on through our presentation, I'll define the different disciplines. But really what Informatica adds is core services around data. So with Apogee support to help expose that through APIs, we can deliver all the data services, transformation, cleansing, mastering that you need in order to drive that high quality end user experience. So uh, I hope that has brought to life a little bit of the landscape context and some of the challenges and what customers uh, are, are, are doing. Um, this is very much about bringing best of breed uh, together in a, in a partnership, leaders with leaders. So with Apogee, uh, a leader in API lifecycle management. And from Informatica, uh, we're the world's leading enterprise cloud data management company with a 25 year focus just purely on managing and delivering high quality data to our customers. And as we move forward in that complex world we discussed of hybrid clouds, um, really one of the leading analysts uh, has, has a, a paper written around how organizations should really start to think about how they can simplify in order to be able to scale uh, to meet the demands of digital transformation into the future. 
And there are four key areas where they suggest standardization. One of them is a classic integration platform service, which is on-prem integration of data, um, which is what Informatica was invented for all those years ago, uh, 25 years ago. And we've been the market leader in that area. And then they also suggest that there is an integration platform as a service, which deals with your modern cloud infrastructure into that new multi-cloud world. And when, whilst doing that, and that needs to be a platform that is rapidly uh, developed and agile through a microservices infrastructure, uh, which Informatica can provide, in order to keep pace with a rapidly changing world uh, and keep data connected, no matter what your platform uh, and technology choice is. And then increasingly in a highly regulated world, a third area is metadata management. Uh, we need to understand how data is propagating through our organizations in order to be compliant with things like GDPR, for example, uh, Basel II in finance and so on and so on. Uh, but we're not going to see reduction in, in, uh, in regulation. We're probably going to see an increase. And having visualization around how data propagates is key in order to remain compliant. But then on top of that, technology um, and uh, metadata around the infrastructure and the performance, the scalability uh, and predictability around how we can move forward into the future to avoid failures is key and a fundamental part of, of what we can provide through metadata. And then lastly, being able to expose it through digital services and therefore an API management uh, platform is critical, uh, which Apogee can provide. And that's critical because just like we've experienced with cloud adoption, that sprawl of many different clouds and many different skill sets, there's a real danger that if we don't govern how we adopt APIs, we'll get that same complexity being introduced as we adopt more and more APIs. So an API management platform like Apogee is critical. So this isn't just a partnership of words, it's a, pro a partnership of product integrations as well. So uh, an Informatica developer in the world of Informatica can easily publish uh, an endpoint and a service into Apogee within the experience uh, that they are familiar with. And likewise, in Apogee, uh, I as an Apogee developer can easily connect using endpoints, uh, connect to an Informatica endpoint. So what are the customer benefits? Enabling enterprises to accelerate digital transformation by leveraging secure, manageable, and monetized APIs that connect data and applications across hybrid and cloud environments. So let's take this as an opportunity just to drive into some more detail. And first of all, we'll go into Apogee. So I'm going to talk about secure, manage, and monetize APIs. And to give you, uh, for those particularly new, uh, a sense of who we are, We've been in this business for about 10 years. We have about 650 customers across multiple verticals, uh, from financial services to retail to education to telcos. Very pleased that this year, Gartner named us a leader again. Uh, we're a leader for the Gartner Magic Quadrant for full lifecycle API management. So overall highest for both ability to execute and completeness of vision. So let's just talk about these uh, securing and managing and monetizing APIs. It's really important that you can do this uh, internally and externally. There's often just a focus on just external. But with Apogee, you can quickly build and deliver applications that give customers and partners, employees, these optimized, seamless experiences. You're not making a compromise on the experience. You can empower internal developers to easily and safely and securely and in a highly repeatable way build APIs using kind of classic DevOps techniques to unlock siloed data and securely connect to applications. Often this is across uh, uh, leveraging multiple endpoints across multiple clouds. What's really important for the modern business today is having that visibility, that control plane over data as it flows in and out of the organization. So we saw the image earlier of how Apogee and Informatica and uh, the connected uh, experiences uh, align. Let's just focus uh, on this top half for a moment. So it's really important today that a modern business can let this 
top layer flourish. So internal developers can easily uh, onboard and access your entire catalog of APIs across your entire business. That they can easily spin up new applications, new propositions and new features. Likewise with partners. Partners can easily onboard, um, sign up, explore and go to market. This is all underpinned by this full lifecycle API management from initial conception. So often this is a design up front uh, uh, through specifications, API specifications, sharing that with your de developers and then rapidly iterating and evolving this uh, through the lifecycle uh, into production with that confidence around really rich analytics. And we'll go into this layer in more detail now. So many people make the mistake when they think about API management as the gateway. And the gateway is in this bottom left here. Now, I'm not going to go through every single element of the platform uh, in this webinar, but I just want to emphasize a, a few key aspects uh, to enable your business. So looking at developer ecosystem first, the API catalog. Managing APIs as a cohesive whole, as strategic assets for your enterprise is really valuable even just internally, let alone, of course, externally. Uh, enabling the business to be able to manage this. So the business can say, oh, this internal API could be a valuable asset externally. And then if we look at API products, this is, again, a really key aspect of success. Managing APIs, uh, this might be one or many APIs, as a cohesive API product that is delivering value for a specific purpose. So again, previous webinars have talked this into more detail. But as an example, I might produce an API product for an internal team looking at a particular uh, business area. Or I might produce an API product for a particular type of partner, such as a strategic partnership with another enterprise, as opposed to another API product that I might produce for a, a bedroom developer. And then dropping down to API analytics. Uh, Developer analytics is really important to ascertain how successful your API program is. Driving also business metrics, so what's the business impact of the API initiative, is also super critical. For example, uh, partner onboarding. And of course, classic analytics around the state of play around op operational control. Uh, I, I'm always uh, uh, noted when I visit customers how uh, how much they really value that visibility of the state of uh, API operations. And then with mediation, it's really important as an organization that you can repeatedly produce APIs that are secure. So having repeatable building blocks so that a, uh, a proliferation of internal developers can consistently build secure APIs. But also as API consumers, uh, I have a very consistent security mechanism as I'm interacting with APIs across your entire organization. Of course, many organizations also like to do some form of transformation to produce perhaps simplified versions of APIs for particular types of connected experiences. You know, for example, the Apple Watch versus a Google Home. API abuse prevention. So, you know, obviously APIs are another uh, uh, surface of, a, of attack or potential attack. And, you know, abuse can be uh, intentional or it can, can be unintentional. So there can be, for example, the internal developer who introduces by accident a defect that then aggressively attacks uh, one of your APIs. You don't want that to impact a key system of, uh, of or sort, key system of record. And you have various mechanisms in play to help protect that. And we have products like Apogee Sense that also scan global API traffic to look for suspicious traffic to help you defend that API perimeter. And then we drop down to API runtime. We had the gateway. Uh, and then with Istio, many companies today are looking at building microservices using things like Istio to build service meshes, service meshes across their organization. One other key aspect on this plethora of functionality is monetization. 
So you as a business being able to say, this strategic asset is something that we now want to monetize. And monetization is actually quite a complex topic because there are many ways you can direct, directly monetize an API. There are different types of partners, different types of users. You know, the strategic enterprise will want, for example, an annual uh, arrangement uh, with a known cost. The bedroom developer will want a freemium tier and then low costs of entry as they progress through multiple tiers. Um, and typically for an enterprise, this is about identifying an API product that you want to, want to manage, uh, monetize and really tying that into the business. So the business understand the value and the business have the relationships with the potential consumers of those APIs. And so this is where it's quite nice how uh, the business are aligned and excited and drive API growth for your organization. A philosophy of Apogee is outside in. So really driving everything from the user. So whether that is, of course, simple APIs, but also APIs that don't in any way uh, make the user experience compromised. It also means things like partner onboarding. So really making sure that as a, as a participant to potentially in, in, uh, interact with the organization, uh, I am, it, that entire process is frictionless. So what's the impact to the business? Delightful customer experiences. As I say, no compromise at all with customer experience today. Uh, the, there is no, uh, um, you, ca you cannot allow that for that to happen in the market today. And then ecosystems and platform effects. So being able to participate or indeed own your own ecosystem and leverage those platform effects. Platform effects uh, are, is, is where you see exponential growth of, of API use. And then revenue and growth. So this could be because you have simplified your organization through simple APIs and API products. It could be direct monetization uh, of these new API assets that you've taken to market. And then speed and agility. So you as an organization being able to respond and adapt to new commercial opportunities or new commercial threats, obviously a key a key element of, the, of what you need to be a successful enterprise today. Over to you, Kayla. Thanks so much, Ali. That was great. So now we're just going to take a brief pause to take some questions from the audience. Uh, just as a quick reminder, if you haven't had a chance to ask a question yet, if you'd like to ask a question, you can simply use the URL shown on this screen, or you can click the Ask Question button that you'll see on your viewing pane. The first question we're going to take comes from Stephen. Stephen, thank you for your question. Yes, I love the security consumption-based payment models and backwards compatibility. Clearly, these are key for digital transformation efforts. However, by adding a layer between an existing published API and the API consumers, there will be some sort of added latency. How does one measure the increased latency and how does one optimize to reduce it? So I think that one's for me. Um, so th this is a kind of a classic, uh, a classic concern um, and, I, and I totally get it. And in fact, I used to be uh, a customer of Apogee, and uh, this was always uh, something that came up with my, my colleagues. Um, yes, of course it adds something, but generally it's pretty insignificant. Uh, and you can also decide on where you run Apogee. Um, so for some of our uh, uh, customers, for example, telcos, uh, they may choose to decide to run it on-prem uh, for, for, that, for that reason, and for the fact that they master uh, substantial infrastructure at immense scale. But for the, for the majority of our customers, and indeed some modern telcos today, as well as, uh, for example, financial services, um, even having Apogee on a public cloud provider adds uh, insignificant latency in the grand scheme of things. And of course, there are many things that you can also do around uh, ca caching of data. Great, thanks so much. Thanks again, Stephen, for your question. Next question comes from Martin. Martin, thank you for your question. Uh, he asks, does Apogee also offer a white label API developer portal solution? If yes, do you have some client examples doing this? Uh, 
A absolutely, I think that's you know a key uh, channel of engagement to you know either internal users or external users. Um, so there are two options here. There's a, a simplified version that is part of Apogee Edge, uh, and then there is the uh, the very flexible uh, version that is based on the open source content uh, management system of Drupal, where uh, our customers frequently choose that because it has uh, because they have then total flexibility on the developer experience that they, that they build. And we have many examples of that um, from, for example, ABN AMRO, um, the, the Dutch bank, um, who have a really fantastic API um, program away, uh, uh, in play uh, and a very rich developer portal that is continually changing because they have enabled their teams to con uh, continually change that, that, that portal of engagement. Great, great question, thank you. Uh, we also have got a couple of questions about sharing the presentation and if the slides will be made available afterwards. The whole recording will be available on YouTube afterwards and you'll receive, uh, if provided that you've registered or attended, you'll receive uh, the link to that recording in your inbox uh, soon after the event terminates. Uh, I think we have question for, or time for a couple more questions. Uh, the next question comes from John. John, thank you for your question. Yes, you talked about skills and developers building an Apogee and Informatica. Could you touch on more who are the typical users of your products and how they use them? Okay, so uh, let me give an Informatica perspective. In fact, our world in, ter in terms of the, the users that Informatica support has changed quite dramatically in the last five years. Uh, previously, we were only supporting the, the, the technology developers, but most recently we've been putting a lot of investment into our products to make sure that we've got end user screens which are, are, are business user friendly. So we now have the concept of things like citizen integrators, um, where there's zero based training in order to uh, adopt what can be quite complex data transformation and data quality based services. Uh, and you'll see there's a lot of evolution of roles within organizations like data scientists, data stewards, uh, for example, and, and we've tried to help ensure that we can support all of those types of people who exist within the business who want to interact with data and really expose the data and leverage the data to create that value. Uh, data is a new oil principle that we talked about earlier on. I think from, uh, from an Apogee point of view, um, yes, of course, developers building out APIs, um, but typically from a business point of view, we, we typically see product owners um, use, using Apogee directly so that they can manage these APIs as these API products. Uh, and that, that is an area where actually that agility is really, uh, really important so that, that business can decide and, and, and make those decisions really quickly within, within Apogee. Uh, kind of classic ops users, so seeing the visibility of the state of play uh, and making sure that both producing producer of APIs and also consuming teams of APIs can see those stats is another kind of key user. And then I said, mentioned the dev developer portal as well, so content teams uh, editing uh, content. Wonderful, thank you both. I know we have a couple more questions coming in. Uh, just a reminder, we will have a session at the end of the presentation as well for questions. So just in the interest of time, I'm gonna keep us moving. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna hand it back to you, Greg. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I just thought I'd whip you through uh, Informatica and, and the types of services that we uh, will offer to make sure we can drive that high quality customer engagement. Um, just a little bit about Informatica. Informatica's been in business for 25 years, recently celebrated our 25th anniversary. And uh, we're the market leader in enterprise cloud data management. We'll talk a little bit about the disciplines underneath that. Uh, but Informatica is used by more than 9,000 clients worldwide. Um, so we've got quite a good penetration across all different uh, vertical sectors. And today, we were talking about one specific uh, area of our business, which is integration platform as a service, which we've got the product level integration uh, with Apogee. And I mentioned earlier on, underneath that, there are a whole series of different um, disciplines that that platform can support. And here's just an example of four that we have. One being cloud application integration, which allows you to seamlessly um, integrate data between different cloud applications and indeed the ability to integrate to, to ground as well, where you've got on-premise uh, integrations in, in, in more of a real-time fashion. Uh, then we have cloud data integration, which can be more batch oriented, larger volumes, can be things like uh, complex aggregations, filtering, the types of things you'd need to do in the back end to provide high quality data back through the APIs that you're wanting to expose. And on the right hand side, we have uh, B2B, uh, business to business integration. These are specific technologies and libraries uh, and templates which allow you to easily share data in a standards based format uh, with partners and suppliers. 
And then lastly, we, the way that Informatica is built is all underpinned with, date, with metadata. There is no code. And what that allows you to do is get unprecedented visibility of how data is flowing through the organization through cloud metadata management. So we can see in highly regulated environments what transformations we're applying, how data is propagating, and he's leveraging and using that data, which is an important principle as we move forward. Just to go into a little bit more detail, just to give you some examples across that, uh, the types of services that we will add um, and make available to Apogee uh, customers. Um, things like change data capture, for example, which allows you not only to just extract specific rows, but just extract those rows of data which have changed since the last time you made a request, which can be a really useful function rather than trying to work out what has changed since the last time we did a touch point or an endpoint to extract. Mass ingestion for things like machine learning, uh, for things like machine generated data or IoT uh, sources. Uh, and then Informatica is known uh, for its connectivity. So pretty much out there, whatever you want to build an API for, a data-based API, Informatica has a connectivity to be able to support that across that complex hybrid and multi-cloud world from being able to connect to mainframes all the way through to being able to connect to um, Google uh, GCP platform as well. And there's full support for all those platform options as well as Salesforce customers out there, things like replication services, screen flow services. There's native support for a lot of functionality within cloud-based platforms through the Informatica iPaaS uh, that we have integrated into Apigee. And we talked about it's so important that we simplify and make decisions right now that are gonna allow us to move forward on our digital transformation journey into the future. So the decisions we make now, we don't want platforms and technology and skill sets to be rec become redundant in, in the next two, three, five years. And with Informatica, you can be assured, assured through our joint partnership and leaders supporting leaders that this is a platform for the future. Informatica was first to market with an iPaaS offering almost 10 years ago now, where there was only really one cloud platform in the marketplace at that time. We've seen a rapid adoption of our iPaaS platform. So much so that we're now processing more than three trillion records a month, and I guarantee that that figure is higher than that as I sit here right now. Because as you can see on the right-hand side, the volume of data is doubling every six months. So it's a phenomenal uh, increase in volume. Of the 9,000 customers that Informatica have, we have 8,000 customers who are adopting our iPaaS technologies. So there's a lot of overlap there, and very supportive of that kind of hybrid multi-cloud strategy that we talked earlier on. And in a similar way to Oli talked about the growth of APIs, we're seeing that. We're seeing our platform being used for API uh, services, a growth of 300% um, uh, since 2016. And we're running more than 3 million jobs a day uh, with more than 300 connectors out to cloud-based platforms. So again, no redundancy there. It's simple and it will scale for the future. I tried to give you a visualization as well of how this hooks together in terms of Informatica database services in the back end uh, as well, and uh, hooking into the API, the Apigee services on the front end you might want to consume. And notice we allow you to be able to integrate any applications or any cloud platforms that we've talked about earlier on. Through, um, we can also automatically publish all the services and all the data that Informatica provide through Apigee frameworks. So it's very easy to create reusable content, such as a data quality cleansing routine, for example, address validation, telephone, email validation, simple services, data services like that. It's very easy to publish those as APIs, which can be rapidly consumed uh, by the Apigee framework. And it's able to quickly build, as I mentioned, those secure and scalable API proxies uh, through that single framework. And the product level integration allows us to have single sign-on across this uh, quite complex landscape. And you can start to see on the right-hand side the types of services, application services, data services. We can publish out to ESB, AAI queues if you've got that kind of capability, and data hubs if you want to have a publish and subscribe mechanism for the distribution of data that you might create or consume uh, through your API deployment. And again, just a visualization of how simple it is to create. Those of you familiar with Informatica, that metadata heritage that we have, everything you do allows you to create little widgets that can be exposed as reusable content. And those reusable contents uh, can become APIs at the click of a button. And then from our repository, the product level integration allows Apigee to um, automatically uh, identify and discover through the Informatica repository what services are available that Apigee developers uh, can then consume. Um, so a very simple integration 
but a lot of um, database services that we can really start to provide high quality end user experiences. And our vision of, of Mathematica is really to support any integration pattern. So you can see we talked about change data capture. We talked about streaming through IoT and machine generated data, um, as well as APIs. So any integration pattern we can support, any data, be it big data, be it cloud data, be it on-premise data, be it machine data or IoT data, we can support that. And increasingly, as we extend uh, APIs out, it's important that we can do uh, orchestration of processes as well and try and integrate citizens or line of business users into that, that whole data framework to further enrich and provide high quality data through ownership. So we like to support any user, not just developers, but those line of business citizen integrators I talked about earlier on. And all that through that unified metadata layer, which is modular, you can start small, grow large, hybrid uh, and secure. And it's underpinned by artificial intelligence as well. We have a clear engine, which allows us to automatically monitor and scale. We had a question earlier around, around how do you scale, avoid latency. Well, Informatica can automatically scale to deal with larger volumes without the need to recode. Another good example of why a metadata based framework uh, is, is, is the right choice to support future digital transformation initiatives. And why are we here today? We talked about leaders supporting leaders. Well, Informatica is the leader in five different data disciplines. So not only um, are we the leader uh, in the Gartner Quadrant of July, there on the left-hand side, for on-premise style integrations, mainframes, uh, traditional uh, ERP systems that you'll see out there, but we're also the leader for data quality to provide that high quality data that you need to support digital transformation. We're also the leader, last week was announced, for single view initiatives, master data management. So a single view of Greg, Greg, Gregory, um, and so on. Different spellings of my name, different locations to get high quality data. We're also the leader for metadata as well, to be able to visualize how propagation of data is happening within an organization in order to help you with regulatory compliance. And we're also the leader for integration platform as a service, which is the core and fundamental technology that we've integrated with the Apigee Foundation. But all of these services are available through that uh, integrated platform stack. I'll hand you back to Wally. Thanks, Greg. Uh, that, that was awesome. So I hope that gives you a sense of uh, this uh, combined strategic partnership. Leaders with leaders, best of breed with best of breed. Apogee for full lifecycle API management and how it can accelerate your digital transformation. Yeah, and Informatica for all your um, enterprise cloud data management needs to really drive that high quality customer interaction and experience that Ollie touched upon earlier on. Wonderful. Well, we're going to transition next into a fireside chat section. Uh, what this session we're hoping to accomplish, Greg and Ollie are going to cover a couple of our frequently asked questions that we get and, and kind of the, the big things that people often ask uh, when it comes to the Apogee and Informatica integration. Uh, what we'd like for you to do is obviously pay attention, listen in on what they're discussing, but also please use this time to think about other questions that you may have. We'll hop into another Q&A session right after this session, so please keep that in mind. Um, take it away. Thanks, Kara. Um, so, Greg, um, a lot of things we've covered uh, already. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can we bring it to life, perhaps, with, a, with some customer stories for you? Yes, I think a great example, as we're here in London today, I think a great example uh, would be the London Borough of uh, Dagenham and Barking. Um, let me just explain their challenge. Their challenge uh, for their citizens was uh, were things, they didn't really have any digital-based services for the citizens in their uh, constituency. And so uh, they approached Informatica on how we could help them with that challenge. One of the pains that they were feeling is they were very dependent on old ways of working like customer call centers to support citizens. People would very um, regularly ring into call centers and that's a very expensive way of doing mm. business. So let's look at the digital transformation journey and how they can move forward and reduce that cost and offer a better high quality service. So with Informatica, what they were able to do is uh, using and leveraging the iPass platform that we've already talked about today, was to be able to offer digital services online, so digital forms, which allow um, people who are in council housing, for example, to request specific services, which could be uh, around property maintenance or emergencies and so on, or it could be things like bin collections or any other council services that taxpayers uh, will pay for through their council tax. And what we saw as a result of that, just by going through that digital transformation, was quite a dramatic reduction in the reliance on call center um, uh, staff. So there was a 22% reduction 
by offering these digital services in terms of the volume of calls and workload that was put through call centers. And that's saving uh, the, uh, the, the borough more than a million pounds uh, by doing that. So pretty significant in terms of the value that they've gained from that, just deploying that type of technology and offering those services direct. Awesome. Uh, so I had uh, the question earlier around uh, <laughs> latency. Uh, yeah. Let me also ask you, uh, uh, you know, in this world that is you know, often where we're reliant on sources of truth across multiple, uh, multiple clouds, multiple applications, you know, uh, what can I do to defend or design uh, in, in this world? So Informatic is not in the network space and obviously a chain is only as strong as its weakest link so to speak so we're reliant upon uh, provision of, uh, of things like a network and avoidance of latency through network but certainly with in the most recent, uh, most recent releases of our platform we've been building in more and more intelligence into our platform. I mentioned earlier on the artificial intelligence engine we have called Claire which is underpinning all of our products, our data disciplines that I talked earlier on. So a good example of that would be um, avoidance of having to recode, the automatic scaling, the automatic um, routing, the automatic fixing, the automatic failover that Claire brings to the data management landscape. And if you think about the scale and the challenge that we've got, um, contrast what we're positioning with that fragmented landscape that we talked about earlier on with multiple skill sets and uh, which will all be hard coded by the way, which won't scale into the future. So I think jointly we've got a great proposition leveraging your capabilities and our artificial intelligence platform to be able to meet the needs of highly scaling and complex environments into the future. Great, thanks. Um, and, and earlier you talked about metadata. C yes. Could you perhaps just give a one-on-one, -on -one, like a basic introduction about what you mean with, by metadata and, and why it's so important? So for those of you who don't know, data, metadata is the data about the data. And Informatica has always been a metadata oriented to technology. Uh, and that means we collect and store all the data about the data. And that often is in different areas. It's operational metadata, it's technical metadata as well. So what do I mean by that? Well, operational metadata would be how data is propagating through an organization. So with Informatica, because we collect that, we can actually visualize how data propagates through, physically through an organization, where it persists, where it lands. So you can see the impact on just having that visualization is quite substantial when it comes to highly regulated environments, for example, or even the cost of ownership of managing that landscape of data. You can see how changes would impact your data flows, your data propagation. And obviously, it enables organizations to, um, to really understand their data in a better way. Other good examples of why that's important is when it comes to things like leveraging our assets. Okay? So one of the core uh, challenges for many organizations is where is the high quality data that I have? Where is it stored in this fragmented world? Well, if you've got a metadata based solution and a catalog, which is then searchable, which we have through our framework, which is a core component of our platform that you require, then you've got that capability. You've got the Google for enterprise metadata almost on, on within the hands of people who can turn it into value. And then there's also technical metadata as well, which is more performance oriented about you know, how much data has been moved, whether there were any errors, what's our prediction around how data volumes will grow, were there any peaks and troughs, were there any impact on, on service delivery and so on. Um, and all that technical metadata we can really use to help manage and scale our organization and help Claire make smart decisions on the fly. Uh, through machine learning and artificial intelligence. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Back to you, Kayla. Great. So now we'll turn it, as I mentioned, to our audience Q&A, questions from all of you. Just another quick reminder as we go through it. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, you can feel free to use the link that's available on the slide here, or click that Ask a Question button that's available in your view pane. Uh, the first question we're going to dive into uh, is from Gang. Gang, thank you for your question. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, they ask, you've put the orchestration capability in the mediation layer of the Apogee. Can you explain what Apogee can do and slash or not do well in this area and should be do done better on Informatica side instead as iPass is built for that anyways? Cool. Uh, so perhaps I'll go first and then sure. hand over to you. So, uh, 
Mo many of our customers are using Apigee to do some sort of orchestration, but I think it's one of those cases of, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, in, in Apigee, you can do a lot of things, and you can, for example, if, uh, you know, as a developer, you might actually want to get to the code, so you might want to run your, your, your API proxy in Node.js or JavaScript or, or Java. And you know, in that world, uh, uh, or indeed using the policies inbuilt within Apigee, you can do a lot of orchestration. Um, but I think just be mindful of how much you generally do. So I think lightweight or orchestration is, is OK. Uh, but then I think that roots very nicely into the sweet spots of Informatica. Absolutely. So Informatica is commonly used for a business process workflow um, uh, management. So um, that can be. Uh, quite a complex task involving human interaction as well. So that's common when you've got things like data quality issues where someone may make a request or if you want a credit risk evaluation, there might be steps in order to get to the outcome. Uh, and Informatica is quite comprehensive in its ability to help build, maintain and run those types of business process workflows. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Uh, our next question comes from Mohammed. Mohammed, thank you for your question. Uh, yes, must I publish my endpoints to use Apigee? Meaning, can I run Apigee as a self-contained system on my internet? Uh, so, uh, let me think about that. So, uh, sorry, can you just uh, scroll back up to that question so I can just reread it? Um, y uh, yes, you can run Apigee uh, internally. Uh, I mean, it depends what you mean by internet. So. You know, if you mean on-prem, yes, you can run uh, Apigee on-prem. Uh, we call it OBDK. Uh, actually, typically we call it uh, private cloud now because actually, um, what, what is intranet? What is intranet? What is on-prem? I mean, um, and you know, pri private cloud and hybrid. So you know, I think for many now, it's about building internal systems using some sort of uh, cloud infrastructure. Um, uh, I don't quite get the first question there. But must I publish my endpoints to use Apigee? Um, so uh, you know, you, you can in theory use anything, right, to, to build APIs. Uh, but uh, what I'm, what we're trying to say here is managing that as a cohesive whole for both internal and external APIs is of significant advantage to the business. Okay. Great. Okay. Next question comes from Dominic. Dominic, thanks for your question. Yes, do we have an example where Apigee and Informatica have provided a solution together for a customer, and what was the business case? So I think it's too early to say, um, and we're certainly um, you know, working very closely with many combined uh, customers today. Yeah, I, I, would, I would double that. I think uh, it's, uh, we're announcing the partnership uh, here. Uh, I think there's a lot of interest in the partnership. There's a lot of joint customers. And so we would expect to see that we'll be able to talk about that uh, very shortly. Great. Next one, we have another question from Gang. Thanks for your question, Gang. Uh, if we have to install Apigee on-premise as well as Informatica, what kind of functionalities will be lost compared with the Apigee SaaS and Informatica iPaaS combination? Um, well, Informatica, the iPaaS combination, uh, we have a component called a secure agent, which actually run, can run on-premise. So as far as functionality goes, we wouldn't be limited in terms of having an on-premise uh, iPaaS solution, uh, or we can have a sort of cloud agent as well. So there wouldn't be any challenge for us in that respect. Uh, and I probably would want to defer to one of my technical colleagues to go into, um, into this in any more detail, but you know, ultimately, uh, OPDK, or private cloud version, is you know, very close to the software as a service version, and obviously, but obviously, you know, you're not getting the fresh updates, and you're not getting the elastic infrastructure and the managed infrastructure. Uh, so there's a huge amount of additional value uh, apart from just the, the platform itself. All right. Looks like we have a question in from Elizabeth. Elizabeth, thank you for your question. Uh, she asked, "You asked about the use of AI. Explain how this is important to deal with future challenges and where that comes into play." Yes, yeah, so um, from, uh, I'll take this one off. <laughs> so I think from, from Informatica's perspective, if you think about the challenges that organizations have moving forward, we talked about um, pure scale is one of the things. I mean, they're, they're predicting that volumes over 2016 will be 10x uh, in the following years to 2026. So pure volume and ability to scale is one thing. I always say that's one of the areas where you really need to think about the technologies that you pick. 
and that's my message around making sure that you, what you pick now is not redundant in three years' time. We can scale to extremely high volumes and already are for a number of organizations. But where does the use of AI fit in that? Well, think about scale. If you're not using a solution like Informatica, for example, every time you have higher volumes of data, you need to record. You need to rebuild, retest, reproductionize. And with Informatica, you don't need to do that because the artificial intelligence engine can almost predict growth. And in platforms like um, uh, cloud-based platforms, we can even turn on consumptive usage. So you talked about peak periods like Black, um, uh, Black Friday, for example. Um, those are typical processing uh, peaks uh, that you might see. With, with the use of artificial intelligence, you, you can become consumptive in your use of, of processing power to deal with those peaks and troughs. And therefore, as organizations only pay for peaks when you have peaks rather than paying for it all the year round. But other uses of AI would be things like automation of the integration itself. So in previous years, uh, when you had new streams of data that you wanted to onboard quickly, and you will have that in this digital transformation journey, you need to be reactive and agile, as we talked about. Why not let um, the artificial intelligence do the integration for you based upon having 25 years of experience of integrating that type of data before? Okay? So those are just a, a couple of examples, but you could extend that to things like quality as well, so making sure you've got automated quality, governance of data, how you manage and, and flow data through, and you can auto-correct and auto-govern um, and, uh, quite a lot of data based upon rules and learning that the, that the artificial intelligence engine will have. So it's really a platform that will help you scale to meet the demands for the next few years through use of AI. Cool, and, and let me answer for a number of other aspects. So uh, yes, of course, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the things I was really excited about, uh, you know, with the acquisition uh, into Google was, you know, G G Google's phenomenal reputation with machine learning and AI, and very much baked into many of our products. And of course, we're, we're using it uh, particularly on, you know, running, you know, planetary systems at an at immense scale and, and leveraging auto scaling. But I think also, if I just flip that back to you as a business, uh, you know, it is now really a key, uh, essential. Uh, tenant of, I think, being a digital business. So how are you going to leverage AI uh, and also potentially expose that so that you can deliver uh, insightful, and personalized and intelligent APIs to your consumers? Um, because it's not just about the raw data now. It's very much uh, a step beyond uh, with these intelligent APIs. And it may be that you cannot just do that in-house. So actually leveraging partners who might have this expertise to then perhaps ingest that service with some of your services or data and then produce an API of value, which of course you could then monetize, is definitely a, a sensible uh, strategy for the modern business. Great, thank you both. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions today. If, we, if you had a, submitted a question that we didn't get a chance to answer, uh, don't worry, we'll be for, uh, sure to reach out to you directly to get that question answered for you afterwards. So thank you both for taking the time to answer those questions from the audience. Unfortunately, that's going to bring us to the end of today's session. Uh, thank you all for joining. We really appreciate all the interaction and, and you being on board, and obviously Greg and Oliver for joining us as well. If you want to learn more, uh, we'd encourage you to visit our website at www.apogee.com. Uh, we have a great deal of information about the Informatica Integration Cloud for Apogee and learn more about how to deliver those seamless, connected customer experiences that are going to be so valuable as, as they both discussed throughout the session. Additionally, as I mentioned at the beginning of our session, we'd love to hear your feedback. We want to hear the good, the bad, what you liked, what you didn't like, what we can improve on for next time. So please feel free to submit your feedback via the form that's available at the link here on the slide. Additionally, don't forget to share any of your thoughts, takeaways, fun things you liked on social using the hashtag Apogee Online Meetup. Thank you all once again for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you with us here today. We hope to see you at our next online meetup and have a wonderful holiday season. Thanks, everyone.